This is Jazz Casual, and I'm Ralph Gleason, and our guests in this session of Jazz Casual are the Modern Jazz Quartet, a group that's been together for a little over 10 years, and during that time has done a very great deal to take jazz out of the nightclubs and dance halls and bring it to the concert hall. John Lewis, thank you for being with us today. I'm yeah. delighted to have the MJQ here. Uh, what was the name of that tune you just played? The last piece we played is entitled The Golden Striker. That's from a motion picture score? Yes, uh, called No Sun in Venice in this country. It seems to me that uh, you have been one of the persons, and the group has been one of the groups that has done a great deal with motion picture music and utilizing jazz. In recent years, I think. Has this been a particular problem for you? Has you had? Not a problem. It takes up a lot of time and ideas and energy, but I think it's a very wonderful thing it's that uh, they use a music which is really a contemporary music invented in our time to use with a contemporary art motion pictures have you ever had to use it in, in a contemporary art motion pictures to uh, to denote a, a situation that was not particularly contemporary let's see no not so far no. would that be a problem uh, yes I think uh. so and you think that jazz is better used in a, in a modern sense, contemporary sense, in films exclusively, then? Almost so, unless, you know, there are uh, perhaps older players, say, you could uh, use New Orleans music, for example, and uh, yes. something connected with older things like that, if it was used very... How many, how many film scores have you done now? Let's see, now... Um, Three uh, large ones and then a little small one for the UN uh -huh. called Exposure. Has the quartet appeared in all of these? Uh, no, the quartet has made the music for two of mm -hmm. the large ones, No Sun in Venice and Eyes Against Tomorrow. Now, when you do these, uh, do you um, ordinarily uh, have a chance to work with the, uh, with the actual uh, film as it's being shot, or how does how do how do you start composing the music for them? Well, let's see. Now I've had uh, different experiences. Now, uh -huh. the first one for No Sun in Venice. I, uh, in order to talk over the idea of doing it at all, I went to, to the studio in Paris where they were doing inside studio yeah. shots of this picture, and talked to the producer Raoul Levy and to. Uh, the director of Vadim, and uh, so that was all I saw before I had to do this music. Other than that, I had to work from a, a script, and a script that had uh, time sequences, and from the script you'd had to get some idea of what you think the image and the sound should be going together. Oh, well, now what was the image uh, for the Golden Striker? Well. The image for me, well, Golden Striker is special. It belongs to a group of four pieces. What I tried to do, there were supposed to be, they became a little weak in the process, three main male characters in the picture. Mm -hmm. And for one of the characters, uh, the Golden Striker theme was to be used. I wanted to use mm -hmm. this old-fashioned Wagner technique, mm -hmm. <laughs> light motive. And there were other two other pieces, Cortege and uh, Rose Troop. These I wanted to use with two other characters. And they finally came together in a piece which is called Three Windows. And uh, at the same time, I wanted it to feel like Venice, although in that case, I don't think, really think that was necessary. It happened to feel like Venice, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. a little bit. Have you worked with the application of jazz to um, other art forms, too? Well, yes. Uh, with the ballet uh. here in, in San Francisco. Yes, uh, huh? I was fortunate enough to receive a commission to write uh, music for a ballet called Original Sin, which we'll play some music. And also the quartet has made a long piece called Comedy, which was used for a ballet uh. with four American dancers in Paris. Uh. Well, now with your experience in extending jazz into other areas, uh, and this, of course, is part of the whole progression of jazz music, and it's filling out throughout all of our, of our lives. What do you see as coming uh, in the future for jazz music? What kinds of things, what people, what uh, areas remain? 
Well, I think uh, an, a very important young man who will bring about a big change in music generally, he, he will do this, is Ornette Coleman. And the reason I can see this a bit is because the way he, uh, his plan of playing, the way he plays, is closer to something which is Oh, I guess originated either in the 20s or 30s and since this time, while the way we play is older and much more related to uh, at least the way of playing to older 19th century music. And in this sense, uh, Ornette's playing is closer related to things like James Joyce, James Joyce wrote mm. or Dylan Thomas mm. wrote, which hasn't really caught up with the mass mm. public even yet, although mm. those things are not new anymore. But I think that what he does and what other people can do with this if they truly understand what he's after and doing will be very important on many things other than just listening jazz. Mm -hmm. I think that should be very useful for many movies. Well, good. We're going to hear some something of Oynette's that Oynette has written, and you're going to play yes, some really. film music and some ballet music for us now? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much, John. We look forward to hearing this. The Modern Jazz Quartet will now play If I Were Eve from the ballet score to Original Sin by John Lewis.
the next piece that we would like to play for you is part of a new film score for a picture entitled The Milano Story. It's an Italian film. And this piece is entitled Winter Tale.
It's inherent in the point of view of jazz musicians that they should continually attempt to expand the basis of jazz so that it's used in other art forms and applied to other things such as films and ballet. During the course of this program, John Lewis has shown us how some of this thing, that some of these things have been done by the modern jazz quartet and the success that the modern jazz quartet has had in applying jazz music to films and to ballet is another of the reasons why this group has emerged as one of the most important and most influential jazz groups in the whole history of jazz. Now, there's another thing about jazz musicians, and which is particularly applicable to the modern jazz quartet, and that is that not only must they try to expand their music into other fields uh, by the nature of things, but also they must be very closely attuned to the new voices and to the new ideas and to the young musicians who come up after them with slightly different points of view. Ornette Coleman is a young musician who has caused a great deal of controversy in the past couple of years in jazz because his point of view, his approach to music, is very much different than the point of view and the approach to music of the other jazz musicians currently occupying the scene. It is to the credit of the modern jazz quartet and to John Lewis that they have seen the importance of a man like Ornette Coleman and have attempted to bring some of his music into their own repertoire. And now John will tell you about a tune by Ornette Coleman. The next piece is a composition of Ornette Coleman's that I mentioned earlier, and it's entitled uh, Lonely Woman. <laughs> 